you guys for being here today. Uh, this will most likely be our last uh, press briefing from here. Uh, the events are starting to wind down. Uh, really quickly, we want to thank uh, the Chief uh, McLaughlin, McLaughlin out in Ridgecrest for all that he's been doing and all of the information he's giving to us. We're here to support everything they're doing and they're doing an amazing job. Uh, really quickly, I want to touch on a couple of things and then I'm going to introduce Battalion Chief Brandon Smith to address a couple of other issues. Um, we had a couple of questions recently come out uh, about, sorry, I'm going to pause uh, I'm going to bring Brandon up first uh, to answer some questions about uh, the proclamation and the declarations that you're hearing uh, from the governor and the, the presidential declaration and uh, the status of the dam and then I'll ad address some other issues. Good afternoon, Brandon Smith, the Battalion Chief with Kern County Fire Department, and here working at the EOC or the Emergency Operations Center to support the county and uh, the city of Ridgecrest. And so, um, early on in the incident, um, pretty much July 4th, the first day, the city of Ridgecrest proclaimed a disaster, and at that point, the county also proclaimed a disaster. And then, with that proclamation, the county did that in support of the county, but also to support the city of Ridgecrest. From this point on, it went to the state and Governor Newsom approved a state of emergency for a proclamation. And he has been in contact with the president to reach out for a declaration through the president. That has not happened yet. And we are waiting to hear whether that is gonna happen. There have been some reports that it has happened and we just wanted to make sure everybody understood that that has not happened yet. Moving on to the next topic, um, we've received a lot of requests and, and concern about the Lake Isabella Dam. We've been in contact with the Corps of Engineers and they have reassured us that they have their protocols in place and as soon as they had any kind of movement or activity in the area, they start their response. They have verified with us on the first earthquake, the major earthquake that we had on the 4th, that the dam was safe and it meets all the current standards at the level that they are maintaining that water at. When we had the next large incident, the 7.1, they then responded also and we received the same information. They have validated it. We were very fortunate because they still have the construction going on. So they had construction workers out there to continue to look at it. And they also had engineers on scene and on site to verify that. So we feel very confident with their, uh, with the reassurance that they have provided us and they will continue to monitor it as they are multiple dams up and down the state because we were not probably the only one that was impacted by this. As you all know, this earthquake went wide up and down the state and everybody felt it. And so they in, put into their protocol and checked all of the other dams just as well as they did for the Lake Isabella area. Next, I'll pass up uh, to um, Megan for the uh, next portion. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Um, so the, the next thing that we want to talk about that we're hearing about is the seismic activity. Um, we're not scientists, uh, so we're not going to speak on behalf of the USGS, but we are going to say that the USGS has the greatest amount of information, and we would recommend that you follow them. Uh, there are a lot of rumors starting about uh, whether or not there are uh, subsequent earthquakes that will be coming. What we do know is that it is likely that you will feel four and five point earth uh, aftershocks there in the Ridgecrest area. And so we're gonna remind people that you need to be prepared. Uh, those, the, the folks in Ridgecrest and around the area uh, have been exposed to this for several days now. It's extremely stressful. Uh, so for the folks in Bakersfield, please be prepared just like we've been asking you to be the entire time. Um, again, we don't, we cannot predict uh, earthquakes, nor would anyone up here attempt to make that prediction. Uh, so follow the USGS, they have the current activity and all that information. Um, the, other, the other issue on the, uh, the seismic activity is that there are places where the ground has broken open, um, and we're seeing some startling uh, images of people actually putting themselves or their hands or feet in the cracks to demonstrate how large they are. So we would ask you not to uh, not to put yourself in the crack, um, even as amazing as it looks. Uh, don't 
don't put yourself in harm's way, that's unstable ground. Uh, and then the last thing that we'd like to address is the donations. We've had a lot of questions about not needing donations at this time. What ends up happening is that we have an extremely generous community and they want to support the residents out there. Uh, the problem is, is that when we get all of the goods in that may not necessarily be what the residents need, we then have an incident inside, this incident of having to control and deal with the logistics of all of those donations. So while we absolutely understand and appreciate the generosity of the community, we are strongly encouraging people to stick with monetary donations. The American Red Cross is really working, uh, providing great support out there. So we suggest uh, their disaster relief fund uh, is a great way to do that. There are also uh, funds already set up from some of the nonprofits here locally. Um, so we would suggest that you pursue that. Um, I also want to say that that was not a decision of the American Red Cross. That was a decision on the county's part uh, because of the logistical issues that come with that. So um, that's, that's the updates that we have. We're happy to take questions for either myself or uh, Battalion Chief Smith can answer. So the people of Bakersfield should, if they, if they want to help out, they shouldn't donate. They should make monetary donations of anything, not physical donations. Correct, not physical donations. Uh, there's an amazing system in place, and you may be able to speak great right to that, but uh, when resources are needed, whether it's water or food, immediate care, we have resources in place to respond to the immediate needs. Uh, it's the prolonged need where you start to see a need for donations, and so we would call for that when we need it. Anything to? I just a couple. I just want to add a little bit to this is, you know, there's a wide range of ways to, to help out, and, and many of them are volunteer. You know, Red Cross and many of these other agencies are looking for volunteers. Um, the monetary side helps these different agencies support these major incidents, and that's why we ask for that side of it. You know, when we receive donations, it's, we receive, uh, just through this community, large, large domain donations, but it's also nationwide, and at this point, we confirm with the city of Red Cross and we confirm with all the entities and it's why we led to that decision to not have a bunch of donations coming in and we want to just make sure that we didn't create another issue on top of the current situation because when you start receiving thousands of supplies big rigs full of supplies you then have to establish even more resources and we didn't feel that there was a need yet for that and we appreciate it very much and so that was kind of the stance on this any other questions? Not specifically about that, but okay. can I ask you, does Torona have running water at this point? Torona. So, so I'm not gonna probably comment on that because I don't know for a fact. However, I have spoken with um, one of the assistant chiefs with San Bernardino County, and he assures me that they are actually on the downside of their incident, and they are supporting Torona. They, um, some of the water we had delivered to Kern County or Ridgecrest, was diverted to Trona to support them for drinking water, and they are receiving those that support through San Bernardino County. What is the population of Trona? I, I don't have that offhand. So I know you kind of mentioned that you don't want physical donations, but is there a way people can donate water to Trona in order to help them? Okay, so Shannon Sh Shannon Grove is actually doing a water drive today and so they can contact her office and see how they can donate there. Okay. Do you guys have a, uh, an expectation as to how much longer your crews will be out there in both Ridgecrest and Toronto? Yes, um, so we re received updates from the incident commander and also from the city police chief that we are moving more into the recovery side for the community and get them back. So at this point, the fire response and the emergency responders that were going to mitigate the scenario ahead of us is now on the downside and we are reducing our numbers. Um, we will keep some on standby through the state. The state has assured us they will keep people here as needed. And so we are starting to reduce what is the county's level of service out there. We're starting to bring those back to the stations and give them more recovery time for our own people. But yes, we will probably continue through the weekend and then as you will see in the coming days, most of those fire responses and the emergency responders will be coming back home and will be reducing significantly. Absolutely. And now as these communities begin to recover, what does that process entail? What, what does that look like? On the recovery side? Yes. 
Um, it's going to entail a lot of stuff, and the City of Ridgecrest is establishing a public meeting um, this afternoon to address most of those, and it's going to be a wide range for the community, how to recover, um, what their options are, what resources they have available to them, whether it's physically, whether it's mental health, whether it's uh, property loss, and then not just the citizens, but also how the, the city can recover, what the opportunities are there for their businesses, um, for the infrastructure of the city, and so on, and that's the intent of this meeting this afternoon. And this support will be pretty much uh, statewide, so Cal OES has got a pretty heavy uh, resource there that will be able to cater to the communities, and many others, Red Cross, and a variety of others will be there. I do want to go back to the declaration that you mentioned earlier. Uh, I know that it has not happened officially, um, but once it does, how much uh, aid are we talking? Well, I, I can't give you specifics on that, but um, it will open a lot more doors. It will also allow some reimbursement, not only to your county and city government, but a variety of other uh, features that we can bring to the community to help support them. Any as, questions? As of right now, how many uh, people are making use of the shelter? Do you have that number? We're, we're sitting, I know at one point at the peak we were right in about 300 um, and currently we have 102 in the shelter and then we have 43 outside the shelter so we are still actively supporting and and we do see maybe that number kind of stays steady with the heat and a lot of other things especially if we have the ground shaking because there's a variety of people that are, are not feeling comfortable in their own home and this is a great location to get information but also stay cool and have a lot of the supplies and resources they need. And when would you guys recommend or deem it safe for people to start reconsidering returning back home? Um, I think at this point, you know, um, there's still activity and as the um, USGS has stated that it's hard to predict when something's going to happen. However, um, the ground is going to continue to move and they have said that over the next coming days. And so um, I think most people can start to move back to some normalcy. Um, but the biggest part is just if you are going back into your homes, just check your house. Make sure it's safe. Um, look around for any kind of structural damage and, and items like that. But also start building a plan. If you don't have a plan in place, have a go kit. Have your medications, pet food, water supply, all those things that you would need on just a short-term, regular basis. Make sure you have those and have a plan of communicating with your family to stay in touch. Is there anything else you find important that we haven't asked you about that you want to talk about? Well, I think there's a lot of questions about the EOC or the Emergency Oper Operations Center and what its what its job is. And we have this mutual aid system as we've talked a lot about how we've gotten the resources up and down the state. And where the county EOC comes into play is we bring a lot of those resources. We talk with the cities around within the county, confirm what their needs are, and once they no longer can um, manage it within the city's capacity because these disasters they go well beyond just a regular scenario and so that's where the county EOC comes in and it's basically a partnership amongst the county so we can get resources from various cities throughout the county throughout the uh, Bakersfield City and then once we can't any longer sustain that within the county we reach out to the state and that's part of that mutual aid system and that's what the emergency operations center coordinates No, I just uh, want to make sure we provide all the details for the community meeting. It's uh, it's really important for our residents out there. There'll be all sorts of state, federal, and local resources, um, not just uh, you know structural damage questions and city and county inspectors, but they're going to have um, emotional and spiritual first aid there because that is a, a big issue that people are dealing with right now. It's just the anxiety that's caused by the ground continually shaking. Um, so you'll have that's those services there. That's happening at the Kerr McGee Center um, in Ridgecrest on 100 West California Avenue, and that's at 4 p.m. today. So we would encourage all of the residents in the area to attend that uh, for all of this, the assistance that they're looking forward as they step into the recovery. Thank you. Thank you.